Hello and welcome to web learning where knowledge is shared. In today's video I'll show you how you can connect the cube ID into Raspberry Pi over Ethernet. In theory if you have good Ethernet connection you can debug your board anywhere around the world. So let's see how we're doing it. To begin with you need an SD card and you need the Raspberry Pi software that you can download from the Raspberry Pi website. I'll leave the links below. You connect it to the USB. You choose an OS, so you start the Raspberry Pi. You choose your SD card. This is the SD card that comes and you write into the SD card. So after you finish writing the SD card, you need to remove it and then plug it back again. After you plug it again, you'll see an extra drive. It could be any letter, but it will be boot. And the only thing you need to add is just a text file with SSH, small letters, nothing else. It should have an ending and the file size should be zero. This will enable you to connect directly into the Raspberry using SSH without doing anything. So you don't need a keyboard or a mouse or a screen. So let's remove it and plug it to the Raspberry. So I plugged it in. Now I'll power it on. Don't mind the USB stick, that's for something else. To find out your IP address, you can e either log into your Wi-Fi router or to your Ethernet port in this case and see what's your IP address. Or you can use an app called Net Analyzer from your Android phone and this will show you the IP that the Raspberry got. If you don't have an Ethernet cable and you want to connect the Raspberry directly to your Wi-Fi router, wapa underscore supplicant dot conf file. This file has this lines and then in the SSID you write your SSID name. It's case sensitive so if it doesn't work make sure how you write your SSID name and your password. This file needs to be also next to the SSH file in the boot folder. And the minute you turn the SD card on, it will connect them automatically into your Wi-Fi network. So you don't need a keyboard or a mouse or a screen or anything else. I will leave a link to this file in the description below. After you log into your Raspberry, I'm using PuTTY. It's really important, first of all, to do sudo apt-get update. And then sudo apt-get upgrade. Because I already done that. So now we come to the important part. This is the software that you can connect remotely. So you need to do sudo apt get install open OCD. So this already installed, so I don't need to install it again. Now what we need to do is connect our ST-Link to the Raspberry Pi. So here it is. This is the ST-Link and this is the Raspberry Pi. It's connected. The folder of the Open OCD is located at cd slash user share open OCD. If you do cd scripts and we'll do ls, there is this folder interfaces and another important folder is target. Let's go into target. If we do ls, we can see a lot of configuration files and a lot of them for different microcontrollers. If we'll do ls for ST devices, we can see it covers most of the ST devices. So F0, F1, F2, F3, L4, and most of all the devices are already covered in them. And I'm sure that uh, if they're not covered, they will be covered soon. So our target contains the microcontrollers that we're going to connect to. So let's go back and let's go to interfaces. Let's do ls also. In interfaces, you can see all the options to connect to. The one I'm going to use is the ST-Link V2-1. This is the actual ST-Link that's located on the nuclear board. So there, are, there is R-Link and J-Link and other interfaces that you can use. Right here in this folder, OpenOCD is looking for OpenOCD config file and if you'll see I already have it but if it was a fresh installed package you wouldn't have this folder so what you need to do let me clear the screen 
sudo nano open ocd dot cfg now this file already has the information needed in order to have it remote debug and the few lines that are really important are as follows so the first line is the source so where who is your source and what are you connected to so you can see that source is fine estlink v2 minus 1 dot cfg so this is the actual connection that I have into the estlink now if you're using jlink or something else this is the line that you need to change and you can see that there is no path because we're at the same place. So openocd.config is already in the interface folder. So I'm not going anywhere from this directory. Bind to. This is really important. I spent many hours until I find this line. When you run openocd, it tends to connect only to the local network. So only on the Raspberry Pi. Bind to means that it opens up all the ports also to the outside so it doesn't just let you debug on the raspberry you can also connect remotely and this is really important line without this you cannot connect from outside set workspace of the estlink it's important but you can read about it you don't need to change this the source this is really important this is what board I'm going to debug this is the L053 that I'm using on all my examples. So I'm going back one folder and then I'm going forward into the target folder. And then I'm using the L0 config file. If you're using a different microcontroller, this is really important to change. Correlating to the microcontroller that you're using and to the name of the file that's in the target folder. The rest are also important, but just keep them as is you don't need to touch them or you don't need to change them those are the two lines that are really important to change uh, the source and which interface you are using to exit you do control x you need to save it and that's it to run the debugger all you need to do is sudo open ocd and that's it now the raspberry is waiting and you can see also the S-Link light is flashing and it's waiting for connection. Let's go to the cube ID. Let's do a real quick project. I'll give it the name. Finish. If you don't know what I'm doing, just follow the one of the videos. I'll have a link up here. I'm going to leave everything as usual. I'm not going to change anything and let's go to core slc main.c let's toggle the led so how gpio toggle pin ld2 that's the led and ld pin that's the port and the pin uh, how delay 500 let's change it to let's say uh, now it's 500 let's change it to 1000 let's compile the code okay it finished and now comes the way how are you going to remotely connect into the Raspberry Pi. So there is this debug. We click on the down arrow, debug configuration, and we go to the debug. We go to the debug. And then there is a tab called debugger. First of all, we need to change the debug pro into the open OCD. And then we need to connect to a remote GDB server. My GDB server is 192.168.2.132 in your case you need to use the same IP address that you use here in your Raspberry Pi the port number is 3333 okay click apply and click at the bottom debug now you can see that it's connecting remotely and that's it it connected now you can jump step over and you can run your program and you can see the light that's flashing every one second you can reload you can change it you can see the registers everything is okay i'm connecting from my pc with an address of 2.127 into the raspberry pi that has a different ip address and i can debug them through the ethernet port so you can see there is nothing connected i only have the ethernet cable to remotely debug. That's it. I hope you liked it. 
don't forget to click the subscribe button and if you have any issues with the uh, connection let's stop the debug first of all in order to stop this you need to do control C it will stop if you have any problems with the connections what you need to do is first of all you do LS USB here you can see that it recognized the USB of the ST-Link so that's to see if the ST-Link is working fine and it recognized it correctly the other command that uh, you can use net state minus in this shows you all the TCP connections that you have connected now we're missing the TCP connection for the open OCD I will open another window this time I'm using the native Linux and Windows so if I run again the open OCD let's run the command again if I run the command here of netstate now I can see that the ports are open and 000 means that all the ports are connected correctly and it can reach from the outside if you have 127 or anything else it won't work this is to open to all the networks that's it if you have any questions or comments leave them down at the description and I'll try to answer them thank you